Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guest this evening is Gene Gums, who is the general manager of Sports Country Radio. Gene, welcome. How are you? Very good. Thank good you very see, much for having us. Nice, nice to see you again. Uh -oh. Nice to see you again. Already that's, causing that, problems. That's okay. We're, ca we're causing problems. And we also have an esteemed colleague with us this evening, and that would be... Yeah, you. Me? Yeah, okay. you. Who are you? Uh, what, what's your uh, name? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Forgot. You forgot what you I've name been camped is. here for three weeks. So. Yeah, I know you have. Mm -hmm. Your name is John Clark, and yes. you're with WCNX Radio yes. in Middletown. Last time I looked. Yes, last time you looked. Good evening, Mr. Clark. How are you, sir? Good. Good to see you. Nice, nice to be seen. So, Gene, tell us a little bit about who is Gene Gums and how did he get involved in the sports broadcasting aspect of things? Well, it's you know, sports has always been a passion of mine from the time I was a kid. I was fortunate enough um, to be able to get involved in it in college. I went to Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire and uh, I got involved behind the scenes doing sports information work while I was there. Um, and so it was something that, and I was fortunate enough to get a job in sports right out of college. I became a basketball coach and then I worked, I went overseas, worked in Saudi Arabia for a while um, in sports. And so I had, I've always been working in sports. I worked in college athletics for 25 years while I was working in college athletics. Uh, it was Comcast Cable, as a matter of fact, came to us when I was working up in Springfield and said, hey, we'd like to broadcast your games, but we need an announcer. And they said, you have a really good voice, you should be the announcer. So I started broadcasting our games back in 1986, and that was kind of the start of my career, and I've been doing it for over 30 years since then. You like it? I, it I, I pinch myself every day. You know, I mean, you watch these guys on television. When you're a kid, anybody that's a sports fan, when you're a kid, you're out playing in the backyard and you're doing the play-by-play -play of what you're doing while you're doing it in the backyard, and I get to work at it. And, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to, to travel all over the country uh, doing games, uh, you know, at places like Notre Dame, the University of Washington, UCLA. Uh, I went to Puerto Rico to do a basketball tournament down there for five days. I mean, I, I, I literally... It's that old adage is they say if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life, and I, oh, I've always felt that way. And from what I understand, just by doing some research for tonight's show, that you were also the sports director of WCNX Radio. So yeah. You got, so you got the pleasure of working with our yeah. friend here. Well, you know, it, they, they were getting their station started, and I, I don't even remember where I saw It was the in thing. the Middletown Press. To yeah, the that they were looking for somebody to, to do play-by-play. -play. and. I had a full-time job. I was working at Sacred Heart University at the time down in Fairfield. I had a full-time job working in the athletic communications office, actually running it. And, and I said, you know what, this is a way for me to kind of give back because it was something that they were looking for a volunteer to do it. And I had just moved to Middletown not long ago and I said, you know what, this is a way for me to get involved in the community. So I actually contacted John and uh, John said, well, you know, do you have any samples? So I dropped him off a CD, I think, and he called me up pretty quickly and said, hey, <laughs> let's go. And so I've been doing it since 2007, and it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, because it's at a level that I, I don't normally do. I'm used to doing, uh, you know, the minor leagues and doing uh, Division I college. So this was doing high school sports. I had never done it before, and it's fun because it's about the kids. It's about doing things. They don't get that kind of recognition, so it's, it's, it's a chance to kind of give them a taste of what the big time is like, and it's a way for me to get back to the community and meet some people, and I've really, really enjoyed it. And like 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 you and I have talked about before, with with WCNX Radio, they they're a big believer on local high school sports and giving the getting the word out on your local your local athletes. Well, I think it's important because I think that it doesn't happen enough anymore. I think that we have be all become so enamored with uh, professional sports, you know, with with uh, professional football and baseball that the kids sometimes don't get that much recognition. They don't broadcast high school games in the area very much. There's very few stations anymore that do that. And, and so I think what they do is important. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's still a few AM stations in the state that do some games, but not to the extent that they do. So I think it is important, and I think that, uh, I think it's important for the kids, you know, and, and, and if he wasn't doing it, I'm not sure anybody would be filling that void because WMRD was doing it in Middletown for a while, and they stepped away from it. You know, so I think if, if John and Judy weren't doing that, I think it's a, a valuable thing that would have been lost. Definitely, definitely. I didn't, I didn't know that WMRD was doing high school sports back then. Yeah, they did, for, they did for a while, and then they, they, they just stepped away. But I think some of it was because their announcers were about 112 years old, and they kind of got yeah, old. Yeah. And, and I think that the new manager uh, that took over WMRD wasn't as interested 
in the local community. Even though he owned the station in Middletown, right. I don't think he was as interested in the local community as John and Judy. I mean, they live in Middletown. Yes. I mean, they he live in the middle of it. Uh, Norwalk, somewhere at Darien down that way. And uh, he was like an hour and 15 minutes, so his heart was there, was not Middletown. So. so, you know, so again, if they weren't doing it, I'm not sure anybody would be. So I, I think I think that what they do is very valuable. I'm really thrilled I, I got to be a part of it, and it's actually what kind of prompted me to start my own station and to, mm -hmm. to, to point towards doing something similar myself. I, he's not getting any younger. No. <laughs> Uh, I'm ready for the home. <laughs> so, you know, but, but eventually my wife and I plan to retire um, to Western North Carolina. Huh? So my ultimate goal is to get the station started, to build up a following, to kind of learn some of the stuff that he does from him, the way they do it, and then be able to translate that when I move to North Carolina and kind of do the same thing for the kids down there that he does up here. Now, after all, all the years that you did your, did your broadcasting of basketball and high school sports, you have a favorite memory of it? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, you know, high school, I, I, there's a couple. We, there's a couple of tournament games that we did that, the one we that did, were a lot did of fun. The one that we did at Mohegan Sun just this past year with Mercy High School where they came back and won the game uh, in the final minute. It was unbelievable. I, so I, that ranks right up there as far as high school sports for me go. I mean, I did some, some college stuff and, and so I've done some stuff in the minor leagues that was phenomenal. But I think high school wise, I think that memory that Mercy High School gave us this year probably we, ranks right up there. And we had four of the five original Fab Five players from Mercy from five years ago. That so we're talking 2013, we go five years, they, they're up again for the championship. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls actually was in Dublin, Ireland, flew over to be on the radio show. Yeah, so, it was, it, you know, so I, I would have to say that with the stuff I've done for CNX, mm -hmm. that might be my favorite moment. I mean, we've done some other teams. We did Cromwell winning a championship yep. before. I mean, we've we've had some other championship teams, but the way that game finished for me was probably probably the highlight with the stuff that I've done for them. I almost told them I probably should have retired after that because I'm not sure it's going to get any better. <laughs> now we've been doing this ten years, and you don't know this, but we had sent out reports to all the sponsors. We had forty two thousand four hundred ninety six listeners between September one and March thirty first. So there's, there's the, I mean, it shows the interest oh, yeah. that there is. The interest is sports, there. Yeah. The interest is there. The mission of WCNX is basically to give these kids recognition. So hopefully college scouts around the country will pick up on that and contact the high schools and say, you know, we've, we heard you play a game here, there, or wherever, and we want to look further into having you come to this university or whatever. So, we, you know, we've had eight kids over the last 10 years get either partial or full scholarships. Very nice. It's, it worked. Yeah, a partial scholarship, Pete, is worth thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Partial scholarship. All right. So you know, we're doing our job. We've done our job. You know, it's it's not it, it's it's not it's not glamorous for us because a lot of times when you do the games at a high school, and again, this was this was something that I had to learn because when you're doing college sports or you're doing pro sports, you know, you've got plenty of room to operate and you, you know, you got a nice setup, you know, you're right at courtside. You know, when we do games, sometimes we're in a little corner of the gym, you know, on a little table and you don't, you don't always have the greatest sight lines. But again, that's one of those things that, that I learned very quickly that, you know what, it's not about my comfort, I'm here you know, to do stuff for the kids. And that's, that's really what it's all about for me. And, and, and I think that's how John and Judy feel the same way. I mean, you know, we try not to complain too much. Well, I try not to complain too much. John does a pretty complain. good job. But, but, but I, think that, I think that we learn fairly quickly that it's not about us. It's about the kids. And let's do the best job we can for the kids. And I, and I, think, I think John and Judy have done a pretty good job of that. And that's my goal as I, as I go forward with, with my, my endeavor. Right now, it's not about broadcasting so much as it's, me trying something new and hosting a morning show, doing something that I've always wanted to do, but eventually I want to get to where they are. And obviously you're going to give back to the community and get the... I think you have to. I think, you know, especially at this point in my life, as I said, I mean, I'm, you're getting close to 60 years old. I've had a great career, you know, and, and so it's not about me anymore. And my wife, Barbara, and I are very are big believers in giving back. Whether it's whether it's giving back your time, whether it's donating money to charities, or it's just something that that especially my wife is very passionate about. So if I have a talent like like 
people tell me that I have to broadcast games, well, I'd be kind of silly if I didn't do that, you know. And I've never gotten a dime from John and Judy to do those games. I've been doing them since 2007, and I'm I'm happy to do it. Now, t tell us a little bit about the station. Well. I have two big passions in life, and obviously we've talked about sports as one of them. Well, right. music is the other one. Okay. I'm probably uh, a frustrated musician. I play several instruments, but I never took it to a point where I became a professional doing it, and, and I love to sing. My, vo my wife tells me I have a great voice, but, but, so, but music's a great passion for me. So this was a chance to combine the two. I call it sports country radio, not because I'm talking about this is sports country. I'm talking about because it's sports during the day and it's country music at night. So I have run sports programming from 8 o'clock in the morning until, depending on the day, between 6 and 7 o'clock in the evening. And then from then, I go uh, country music from 7 o'clock at night until my morning show the next morning. So it's a chance for me to combine the two things I love the most. And uh, I'm having a blast with it. I've gotten good response. Look, it's, we're two months into it. So it's going to take a little while. Um, uh, but it, it gave me a chance to combine the two things that I love the most. And as I told you, my big thing was I've always wanted to host a radio show. One of my broadcasting heroes was is Don Imus. Oh, yeah. I was an Imus in the Morning fan. I listened to him religiously um, from the time he was on uh, WNBC in New York back when, when we were kids. Um, so, look, I'm not Don. He told me I should get a cowboy hat and try to be like Don <laughs> Imus, but that's not going to happen. No. Um, but but I've always he's been one of my heroes. So I always wanted to host a morning show. Now look, he had a cast of you know he had producers and he had a newsman. And he had other. People. I'm doing it by myself. But I got to start somewhere, right? So I I, I can't be Imus. Look, you know that's not me. But but I can have fun with it, and that's what I try to do on my morning show. I I have some sports, I have some news, but then I try to do some funny things like I'll look for odd stories to talk about or or things that are just stupid you know or so you'll call him or yeah. yes <laughs> yeah you know or, or 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 I make fun of myself my <laughs> wife and I just came back from vacation I've got I've probably got a week's worth of stories about my vacation so unfortunately those of you that listen in the morning I'm sorry but I've got plenty of stories still to go but but that's kind of what I want to do I want people to have fun with it you know, I don't want it to be like just, you know, somebody who's a boring talking head because there's plenty of those out there. Um, I, I want to try to make it somewhat fun. And I throw a couple of songs in there as well. Um, you know, so it's just, and, and like I used to do, he would talk and then he has some, his, whatever his favorite artist of the day was, he would, he would play music. So that's kind of what, that's what my goal is. And, and it's a lot of fun. It is, and obviously you love you love what you're doing. Yeah, and and I'm trying. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm trying something new. I'm do, I'm hosting an afternoon show as well, um, from four to five in the afternoon, three days a week, and where I'm taking calls from people. Very nice. Now, you, you know what? We're gonna talk about that when we come back. Right. Would you mind sticking around? Perfect. No, I'll be right here. All right, we'll be right back. I'm Howard Schwartz from the Better Business Bureau, serving Connecticut with a consumer moment. Consumers have more power in their hands than ever before. We can go into a store to find an item and then jump on the computer and click until we find the best price. Just remember, aside from the majority of legitimate businesses, there are criminal operations that put up sophisticated looking websites that are designed to steal your credit card or other financial information. Even legitimate bottom basement prices can sometimes be deceiving if you compare the costs of shipping and handling. Do your homework, take your time, and try to stick with well-known websites. Before you pay, make sure that the website address begins with HTTPS. S stands for secure, and you'll see a padlock icon next to it. That means the website is taking the steps necessary to protect your information. This Consumer Moment is brought to you by BBB Serving Connecticut, where you can start with trust. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Sitting here with Gene Gums from Sports Country Radio. Gene, welcome back. Thank you. And we have our our grandfather with us. <laughs> I, I have to go take my Metamucil. Actually, I, I call him my. Actually, he's. He, I guess he's probably my my radio godfather. Oh no. You know. Well, don't tell him. You know, and, and, don't and, and I don't want to. I don't want to blow his head up any more than it already is. But yeah, but please don't. He's been very helpful to me in getting this thing off the ground. He, his son Brian has been helpful as well. I mean, oh, it's yeah. just, it, it, it's, you know, it, it was a great idea. But then I go, oh crap. <laughs> What, what do about, I got to do? And so I had doing? to call him up and say, uh, you know, and so he filled in a lot of the blanks for me. And, and, you know, so 
you know, I don't want to give him too much credit, but I got to give him some credit. Keep that, talking. Yeah, <laughs> that, that he helped me. He really helped me get it off the ground. And I'll tell you, Pete, the yeah. one thing I didn't realize how much work it was going to be. I thought, well, you know, you're going to go talk on the radio for a couple hours. How hard can that be? Until you realize two hours is a long time to talk if you don't have a script. You know, and, and if you're by yourself. Now, I have guests on. I have people that call in that are my guests. Okay. And, I, and I, I might have a segment every day where I have a guest. But I'm still talking for an hour and a half. So I have to have a script every day like to know what I'm going to talk about when. So I spend hours at night prepping for the next day's show. It's become a full-time job. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't realize how tough it was going to be. I can only imagine. You've been doing this what, for a long, long time. I have. And, and you know, I'm sure there's other some segments that are easier than others. And, oh, yeah. and there are some times that you look at, at at the news or you look at who your guest's going to be and go, "What the hell am I going to talk about?" And I've already, I mean, I've only been on for two months and I've had days going, "Oh, this is going to be a rough morning." Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, so so it, it's it's a little bit more work than I expected. But but, but you like it. Yeah, well, I Good. do. Uh, you know, the biggest challenge for me is, uh, I think I, before we took the break, I was talking about wanting to do the afternoon show and take calls. Yeah. Well, I don't have a pro producer, so I can't screen my calls. That's a challenge because, I, I, you know, while it's the Internet and language isn't an issue so much, I don't want to have people cursing on the air. I want to try to run it as professionally as I can. I don't want people calling up, dropping F-bombs. Well, right. I've already had that happen a couple of times. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I should be glad that some people called. <laughs> right. But, you know, I had one a guy call a couple of weeks ago, hey, how about that effing game last night? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh. You know, and so, you know, I cut him off fairly quickly, and I, th you know, you thank him for the call. Yeah. And then you go, and then I, then I kind of segued and went into a little bit more about the game that night. But that's that's kind of the challenge when you're doing a one-man operation and you don't have anybody to screen <laughs> you your call. Yes. Now, my wife says if I want to pay her what she's making now at her job, she'll quit and come and be my produce. producer. There you go. But I probably have to sell John to come up with the money to do that oh boy so you know so so that's you know so that's a bit of a challenge being a one-man operation it is um, you it know is. that'd be like if you were doing this show and you didn't have the guys behind the camera and the people in the control room I know. It'd be kind of tough to, to, to like, do how am I gonna pull this off yeah so it, you know it's it's not it, it's a challenge but it's a challenge that I that I really am having a good time with exactly now when, when you ha when you have student obviously with sports country radio you guys focus on Sports, right? Yeah, and, but uh, and it's I try to I try to make it a variety of sports. Now you know it's got to have a northeast slant because look, I'm, you know, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. Yes, you know I'm, a, I'm I root for the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. You know I root for the right. New England Patriots. So it's going Absolutely. to have that slant, but I try to make it as national as I can, and uh, because I don't want to turn people off that are Yankee fans or, or or Giant fans or Jet fans or whatever. So. While my show in the morning might have more of a northeast slant, one of the other things I've done is my shows that I have on during the day, I try to come up with a variety. Like I have a guy that's a New York Jets fan, so he does a show every week that's about the Jets. I have somebody else uh, who's a Yankee fan. He does a Yankee show. So I try to, uh, to give a little bit of something for everybody. And, and I've got three or four more shows getting ready to come online in the next couple of weeks that people... People are now, the word's starting to get out, so people are actually approaching me and saying, hey, I have a show I'd like to do. Do you have a slot for me? And I, I said, well, if I don't, I'll make one. You know, I mean, because ultimately, if I could get enough programming where I could extend sports programming deeper into the night, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Exactly. You know, um, and we were talking before we went on the air, there's a kid uh, from right down on the shore here in Clinton, Dan Zampano, who uh, uh, works at Vantage Sports, and, and uh, he and his friend Chris Raza do one. Um, uh, called Grind Time, and uh, these guys, I mean, they're nuts, but they're fun, and, and they're really into sports, but, they're, but they do things a little bit differently. Uh, but they're in their mid-20s, and I'm really old, you know, and so I try to have a, like, I've got podcasts with people that do it in their 20s, all the way up into their 50s, and I have a young man that just contacted me from Fairfield. Uh, he's 16 years old, but he broadcasts on their high school television station does their sports on their high school television station he wants to know if i'm willing no to offense had him on about two months ago. yeah I, he's an amazing kid yeah he so he wanted to know if i'd be willing to, to have him show and i said you know what yeah and i'm, I'm going to embrace the fact that he's 16. yeah uh, and and you know the first thing i'm gonna tell him is keep it clean 
But after that, I think that it's it's great to have that that broad demographic where I have people all the way from 16 all the way up into their their late 50s doing shows, and I, I think it's gonna it's gonna work out good. I'm excited about it. To 16, 20, and the late 50s, and then you throw him in the mix, and well, I don't let him on my I'm, air. I'm hitting 70s. Uh, yeah, I don't. I know. I, I don't. I let Judy on the air, but I'm not letting him on the air. <laughs> Would you let me on the air? I would absolutely let you on the air. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, you know what? We'll have to do one of these mornings. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to have you on, and uh, we can do a segment on my morning show. We'll find something fun to talk about. I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff going on down here on the shoreline. I'd, we'll talk about John Clark. Oh, <laughs> we could probably fill oh, two hours seconds. with that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> tell, tell stories. But I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd love to have you on in the morning. But, you know, and, and I have a lot of friends in the media that I've met over the years. And I'm going to tap into every one of them, so they, they better be warned. You, so. you can call it the John Clark punching bag segment or something. There, perfect. There, there, perfect. There, you know what? We'll sell tickets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I get around Middletown, and the people find out that I've worked with him, and they all, they all just kind of go, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> not him. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll bet we could sell tickets. We, pro we probably yeah, could. Yeah, we probably could. Hey, really, really quick question, and I know, I know that you covered Middletown sports, so yep. you, you obviously knew Jim Bransfield from the Middletown Press. Knew him very well. Great guy, because uh, I, I covered my one of my side hobbies is I was director of social media for Morgan Football, and I did Morgan Lacrosse this year, so I had a chance to meet Jim on the sidelines, and our, our coach was like, no reporters on the sidelines except for Jim, except for Bransfeld from the Middletown Press, and every time he would come on the sidelines, Coach Mazzetti, how are you? Good to see you again. Sir, how's it going? What's new? Might Very be, classy guy. Might be one of the nicest gentlemen I've ever met in my life. Even, and I didn't hold the fact that he was a Yankee fan against him. Um, truly a gentleman and, and uh, one, of my, one of my favorite people. And I saw him uh, three. Three, three or four days before he went in the hospital to have his surgery. Uh, he was at an Xavier High School game yeah. doing the PA and keeping the scorebook, and he was over talking to John and I, and it was like it was going to be simple surgery, and I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. And uh, I never got to see him again, and uh, it, to say it came as a shock, uh, yeah. you know. The, the good news is is uh, they're going to dedicate the press box at the field. It's already in his son's name at Palmer Field, the baseball press box. They're going to add Jim Bransfield's name to that, uh, and they're going to do it later on this summer. Uh, at an American Legion baseball game. Very cool. And I'm happy to say that uh, Sports Country Radio will be there broadcasting the American Legion game when they do that. And wow. I'm going to try to get his son on because... Uh, Very yeah, cool. Yeah, he was an icon in Middletown. Actually, he was an icon in this state. He was. There wasn't a person in this state, I don't think, that didn't, that, that didn't know Jim Bransfield. Did you have a chance to work with Jim Bransfield from the middle? Oh, we had a there, couple. Sir? We had did a couple games at, at Palmer Field, and they had somebody doing the game for Xavier, and the, and the, the announcer was one of the brothers. It's it's fourth down and seven. Jim's going, no, it's five and eight. And then then uh, Jay Hickey's going, it was four and seven, five and eight. Somewhere in between, the truth lies. Yeah, Jim. Jim. Oh, Jim good. Well, Jim was really good to, to John at CNX. He always made sure that that. People knew what they were doing and how you know when the games were going to be on. He was really great about that. And or we'd be doing a trivia question, and he'd be in the background yelling the correct answer. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Jim, it's a trivia question. Right. You know? You're not supposed to know the answer. Don't Jim. tell the people the answer. Right. But he was he was great. Yeah. But yeah, no, the, uh, the the community is going to miss Jim Bransfield. He was a treasure that's not ever going to be replaced, and exactly. and I'm just glad I had a chance to, to to know him for a little while. I was going to say I was looking at your your resume, and I guess you've re you 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 did some writing as well. I did. I've uh, yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> you know, and 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 that's one of the reasons why I bonded with Jim too, is because he knew I was a writer, and he knew I had been a sports writer. Um, I worked for the Norwich Bulletin. I look, I worked for the Shoreline Times for Hal Levy for a number of years. Um, who passed away a few years ago and uh, so I started as a sports writer so that's I think one of the reasons why he and I bonded so well. I was gonna say you probably had a chance to meet Paul Nichols. Did. All right. I did. I did. I just you know again being in, in this this area for so many years there's, there's a lot of people that I know and I said the ones that are still around be warned because I'm coming for you to, to get them all on my show. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got to take. Got to take advantage of all the people. You know. I'm sure that uh, your Rolodex must be rather full after all the years you've been doing this. And you know, sometimes you need a guest, and you, at least you got somebody you can call. I did. I did. I did. I did that. I did that not long ago. I had a cancellation on like a Friday afternoon. It's like, uh, yeah. okay, now and it's Friday afternoon at like five o'clock. It's like, uh, so I 
throw my Rolodex out. I'm like, all right. So I actually, it was the first selectman of the town of Old Saybrook. I called him. I'm like, what are you doing Monday afternoon at 5.30? He's like, making a guest appearance on with Pete Mazzetti. I'm like, that would be awesome. He's like, I'll be there. I'm I'll like, be doing the I'm same like, thing. Excellent. Yep. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. like, Absolutely. Yep. Excellent. So. Yeah, like, like, and I know you've said this to people all the time regarding Pete Mazzetti. Pete Mazzetti, people would die to have Pete Mazzetti's Rolodex. Right. They would die. They would. And lose both arms. Are right. Killed. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because I've I've been I've been with Valley. He's the only guy I know who can pick up his Rolodex, call the governor, and have the governor here tomorrow as a guest on his show. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't do it either. Well. That's just that's, right. Yeah. No, it, it's it, it. I've been I, before doing. I've been with Valley Shore Community TV for about. It'll be five years in October. But before that, I was with, like we were talking off camera. I was with Comcast out of Clinton for twelve or thirteen years at least. So you're coming up on twenty years. I am coming up on twenty years. Wow. So I started when I was eighteen. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Now okay. you're 42. And right now I'm 40. Right. Well, I'm coming up on two months, and I promise that I'll come back when I'm when I'm when I'm bigger. And uh, and thank you for you uh, for giving me a start. I promise. You promise. I promise. You yeah. gonna bring him with you? Oh, no. Oh, thank God. Absolutely not. Amen. Amen. I'll stay home. Oh, thank God. Peace. Thank you very much, Jim. Good fun. Mr. Clark, I'm vacating the seat. I've thank sat in the seat for three weeks. I know you have. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Harry. <laughs> good night, guys. Thanks, Pete. No problem. I'm going to have Gene Gums, John Clark. I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next time.